Okay, so this is a key to topic 22, uh, radicals extra 12. And in topic 22 is where you're multiplying uh, radicals. And for the most part, it looks like all of these problems are, most of them are square roots, and then you have uh, a cube root here. So, so uh, let's talk about number one. Uh, by the way, it says find each product and simplify if possible. No work is required for this worksheet. Now, obviously, you have to do some mental work and possibly some some uh, work by hand, but for this worksheet, there's no work to be turned in. So let's look at number one. So number one, you have eight square root of seven times the negative seven square root of three. Okay, so notice that that in this in number one, everything's a product here. Eight times the square root of seven times the negative seven times the square root of three. In in previous lessons, you learned about the uh, product. Uh, the, the product property for radicals. And so if you look at the square root of 7, I'm going to go ahead and do that here, the square root of 7 times the square root of 3, that you see here, so according to that product property, when the indices are the same, so the indexes here are both 2's, you can just multiply the radicands together. And notice that I cannot simplify the square root of 7, nor can I simplify the square root of 3, so when I multiply it, I get the square root of 21. And I cannot, and the only perfect square that goes into 21 is 1. So I cannot simplify that. And so then all I do then is just multiply 8 and negative 7 together. And so 8 times times negative 7 is a negative 56. And so I get negative 56 square root of 21. Okay? All right, let's do number 2. Number 2, you have 2 square root of 5 times 3 square root of 20. All right, so just uh, just like we did number one, using the um, product property for radicals, I know that I, that I can multiply the square root of 5 and the square root of 20 together and write it as one square root. And I know that I can simplify the square root of 20, but if I just multiply 5 and, and 20 together, I'm going to get 100, and I know that the square root of 100 is just 10. Okay, now I just want to show you this. If you if you went ahead, if you went ahead and you simplify the square root of twenty, that's fine as well. You can do that. So watch the square root of twenty. I can I can write as the square root of four times the square root of five, right? And then the square root of four is two. So I get I get two. This two here. All right. So let me just go ahead and write like this: square root of five times two times the square root of five. And I know that I can uh, multiply these square root of 5's together, and so I get 2 times the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is 5, so you get 2 times 5, which is 10. So there are multiple ways of, of doing these problems, okay? So, so you get 10 here, and so I get 2 times 3 is 6, all right? And then the square root of 5 times the square root of 20 we found to be 10, correct? Either, either approach, we get 10. And so I get 6 times 10, which is 60. So that's the answer to number 2. And number 3, we have um, the square root of 26a to the 6th power times b to the 7th times the square root of 2a to the 8th, b to the 10th. Now, the best approach for this one is just to go ahead right away and use that product rule. So I'm going to go ahead and say 26 times 2 is, is 52. So I'm going to get the square root of 52. And then remember, when you multiply like bases, think about what you have. You have a to the 6 times a to the 8th, right? So when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. So it becomes a to the uh, 14th power. So I get square root of 52. A to the 14th, and then do the same thing with, with B. So B to the 7th times B to the 10th is B to the 17th, right? So B to the 7th times B to the 10th. So when you multiply like bases, you add exponents, so it's B to the 17th. Okay? All right, now, using the product property for radicals, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as the square root of 52 times the square root of A to the 14th times the square root of b to the 17th. And then we just use information we've, we've learned in the past. So the largest perfect square, and if you need to use your calculator, use your calculator, but the largest perfect square that goes into 52 
Um, let's try four. So here's what I would do. I would say if you think it's four, try four. So 52 divided by four equals 13. And you're right, it is four because 13 is um, a prime number. And the only, the only perfect square that goes into 13 is one. So it's four. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of four times the square root of 13. That's what this is. Four times 13 is 52. Now from previous lessons, I know that I can simplify eight the square root of 8 to the 14th because 14 is greater than or equal to 2. In particular, this is easy because 14 is divisible by 2. So that's going to be 8 to the 7th power. And I know that's true because 8 to the 7 times itself is 8 to the 14th. Now, I can simplify b to the 17th because 17 is greater than or equal to 2. But this one's not as easy as that one because 17 is not divisible by 2. Okay? So I'm going to have to think, what's the largest number, the largest whole number, less than 17, that's divisible by 2, and that'll be 16. So you're going to rewrite this as the square root of b to the 16th times the square root of b, right? And so now let's simplify each of these that I have. So this becomes 2, this stays the square root of 13, this is 8 to the 7th, this right here becomes b to the 8th, right? 16 divided by 2 is 8, b to the 8th times itself is b to the 16th, and I cannot simplify the square root of b. All right, now look at what you have. So, so you have the square root of 13, so think about this, square root of 13 times, and then you have the square root of b, right? Well, according to the product rule, I can write this as one square root. So it'll be the square root of 13b. And I'm going to put that on the end of my answer. And so, and so I have, I have 2, a to the 7th, b to the 8th. So 2, a to the 7th, b to the 8th, times the square root of 13 b. All right, and so that was number three. Okay, so let's look at number four. So number four, we have this for number four. So number four, you have the square root of six times the square root of nine x cubed, right? Okay, and so um, if you if you want to, you can go ahead, just like we did a while ago, you can go ahead and multiply and write this as one square root. No, no problem with that. You can do that. So 6 times 9 is, is uh, 54, right? So you get the square root of 54, x to the third power. But then you gotta, you got to simplify this. So you would say, well, that's going to be the square root of 54 times the square root of x cubed, right? And so then you would say, well, what's the largest perfect square that goes into 54? So uh, let's try, let's try. And, and, and then some students just say, well, I'm going to try 4, and we'll try 9, and so on, in that order. Hey, nothing wrong with that. You can do that. So if you try 54 divided by 4, notice that's a decimal. So, that, so 4, 54 is not divisible by 4. Then you try 9. 54 divided by 9 equals 6. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because don't you see that 9 right here? 9 is a perfect square. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. And then I can simplify the square root of x cubed because 3 is greater than or equal to 2. But 3 is not divisible by 2, so then we got to think about this a little bit more. Okay, so the largest whole number less than 3 that's divisible by 2 is 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of x squared times the square root of x. So then all this becomes this. Now let's go ahead and simplify what I can here. So the square root of 9 is 3. I cannot simplify the square root of 6. The square root of x squared is x. I cannot simplify the square root of x. And so therefore I'm going to rewrite these two as 1. So remember the square root of 6 times the square root of x is the square root of 6x. And so I get 3x, 3x times the square root of 6x. And always put, when, whenever you have radicals, in, I mean square uh, variables involved, I'll always put the, the uh, radical at the end and the variable between the number and the radical like that. It just looks better. Okay, number five. Number five, you have... Um, Oh, by the way, so someone else, and again, I did it this way. Someone else could have done this. I just want to show you this. So someone else could have said, well, hey, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this first. Like, you can do that. So watch. You can say the square root of 6 times, and then you have the square root of 9 times the square root of x cubed, right? Okay? And so you have the square root of 6. So you're just going to be or You can do it this way. Uh, all right. And then you have the square root of 6 times 3, and then the square root of x cubed, just like we talked about here, it will be the square root of x squared times the square root of x. So that's the square root of 6 times 3 times 
x, right? Square root of x squared is x times the square root of x. And then the square root of 6 times the square root of x, which we already talked about here. I'm going to go ahead and just not write it. It's this right here. Is the square root of 6x. So this becomes 3x square root of 6x. So you see, either way is fine. So, so think about the different ways that you can approach something. There's not always, in every situation, one way to do this. All right. Okay, number five. Number five, we have the square root of 13x to the seventh times the square root of 13x to the fifth. Okay? Now, I just want you to see something and, and, and make things easy in yourself. You have the square root of 13 and you have the square root of 13. So think, what do you think the square root of 13 times the square root of 13 is? Well, from your experiences, you should automatically say that's just 13, right? Because this is the square root of 13 squared and 2 divided by uh, the index 2 is 1. So what times itself is 13 squared? Well, it's 13, all right? So, so you can think of it that way. You can, you can, you can think of, of um, your approaches in terms of what you see in front of you. Now, what some students will probably do is they'll say, well, 13 times 13 is 169. No big deal. You can do that. And then x to the 7 times x to the 5th. Okay, so remember, when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. So 7 plus 5 is going to be, what's that, 12? Okay. And so now you have... If you split it apart, you're going to have, using a product property, you have the square root of 169 times the square root of x to the 12. Well, 169 is a perfect square. That's that 13 we we're talking about. The square root of x squared, 12 is even, so that's divisible by 2, so it'll be x to the 6. And there's your answer 13x to the 6. All right, number 6. Number 6, you have the square root of 14m to the 5th times the square root of 7m to the 11. All right, so I want you to think about the, the square root of 14 and square root of 7 for a moment. Just, just think. All right, now what some people are going to do is they're going to they're multiply 14 and 7 together, and they're going to say, they're going to say, well, let's do it here. They're going to say 14 times 7, so 14 times 7 is going to be 98, right? Okay? And then m to the 5th times m to the 11, 5 plus 11 is 16. So the m to the 16th. And then they got to figure out, well, what's the largest perfect square that goes into 98? But what I want you to do is think. Okay, so when you get to that point and, and, and you ask yourself, what's the largest perfect square that goes into 98? Look at what you have here. So do you all agree that a square root of 14 I can, I can also write as, as a square root of 7 times the square root of 2? This right here. And you have this other square root of 7. So what's the square root of 7 times the square root of 7? Well, that's the... Uh, so, so the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 49, right? And, and 49 is a perfect square. The square root of 49 is 7. So, so that's going to be 49 here. So 98 divided by 49 obviously is going to be this 2, right? You get 2. So this becomes the square root of 98 times the square root of m to the 16th. And the square root of 98 I can write as the square root of 49 times the square root of 2. M to the, the square root of m to the 16th is m to the 8th. And the square root of 49 is 7. So this is 7. The square root of 2, m to the 8th. And I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this where the square root of 2 is on the end. So this is going to become 7, m to the 8th, square root of 2. Okay? So that was number 6. All right, let's look at number 7. So in number 7... We have this for number seven. All right, we have the cube root of three x to the fourth times y to the fourth times the cube root of nine x to the fifth y. All right, I'm just going ahead and multiply this. Um, uh, although I want you to think, see the cube root three, right? So, so you have 3 and then you have a 9. So I want you to think uh, with, this, with these numbers for a moment. So you have the cube root of 3 and you have the cube root of 9. So do you all agree that 9 is 3 times 3, right? So if you think about it, I can write this as the cube root of 3, this right here, right here, twice, right? And then notice you're multiplying the cube root of 3 times by itself 3 times. So the cube root of 3 times the cube root of 3 times the cube root of 3 is just 3. And so if, if you were, because it makes sense because this 3 times 3 times 3 is, not, is 27, right? And so the cube root of 27 is, is 3. 
so so you have that approach to think about as, as you do this. What most of you are going to do is you're just going to multiply this out. So you're going to say, I'm going to write this as one cube root, so 3 times 9 is 27. x to the fourth times x to the fifth is x to the ninth. Okay, so you're going to write that. And then you're going to say y to the fourth times y, when you multiply like bases at exponents, 4 plus 1, that's a 1 here, is 5. So you have y to the fifth. Okay, that's, that's no big deal so far. All right, and then you're going to simplify this right here. So you're going to write this as the cube root of 27 times the cube root of x to the ninth times the cube root of y to the fifth. And then you simplify what you can. This one's easy right away. 27 is a perfect cube. So that, the answer there is 3. The cube root of x to the ninth, 9 is divisible by 3, so it'll be x cubed. Makes sense because x cubed times itself 3 times is x to the ninth. Now that one's not easy. I can, I, I can simplify this because 5 is greater than or equal to 3, but 5 is not divisible by 3. So what's the largest whole number less than 5 is divisible by 3? And so that's going to be y to the third, so 3. So you get cube root of y to the third times the cube root of y squared. 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, and then now I can simplify this now, so that becomes 3x cubed, the cube root of y cubed is y, and you're left with the cube root of y squared. And you cannot simplify the cube root of y squared because the exponent 2 is less than the index. And that is it. That's all you can do. Okay, so that's answer number 7. Number 8, you have um, 4 times the square root of 5x times a negative 3 times the square root of 2x. All right, so, so I, know, I know that 4 times a negative 3, that's going to be a negative 12, right? Okay, and, and look at what you have. You have the square root of 5x times the square root of 2x, okay? So, so I'm going to write this right here as, as uh, one square root. So it'll be the square root of 10x squared. Now be careful, x times x is x squared. Some students will mess up and they'll just say this is 10x. It's not 10x, it's 10x squared. 5x times 2x is 10x squared. Okay, so let's put that here. All right. And then what you're going to do is you're going to simplify this if you can. And, and you can. You can see this because x squared, the 2, is divisible by the index. Um, and, and, and in fact, the exponent of 2 is greater than or equal to 2. So you get negative 12 times the square root of 10 times the square root of x squared. And so this becomes negative 12 times the square root of 10. And the square root of x squared is x because x times x is x squared. And I'm going to rewrite this so that way the square root of 10 is on the end. So I get negative 12 x squared of 10. Okay? And, and it doesn't matter. You can write it like this. Just to make sure you know that. You can, you can write it either way. Um, I just prefer to have the square root on the end so that way it doesn't look like the x is, is underneath the square root, which you would not get full credit if it looks like that. Okay, number, number nine. Number nine, you have six square root of 21 times four square root of seven. And uh, so six times four is 24. And so let's talk about the square root of 21 and the square root of seven. Make things easier yourself. So what some students are gonna do is they're gonna multiply 21 and seven together. And, and, and no big deal, you can do that. So 21 times seven, that's 147. But then they get, a, they get a little stuck here because 147 is not an easy number to think about. So what I want you to do, though, is think about 21. Let's talk about 21. See that 21? The, the only perfect square that goes into 21 is, is 1. But, but I want you to think about 21 this way. Uh, I can write 21 as a square root of 3 times the square root of 7, right? And then you have this square root of 7 right here. So, so do you all agree that 7 times 7 is 49? And then ask yourself, well, if 7 times 7 is 49, and this right here equals this number, then 49 has to be divisible into 147. All right, let's check it. 147 divided by 49. Oops, okay, let's do it again. So 147 divided by 49 equals 3. Okay, and so, and so what I want you to think about is that this right here is really... 3, the square root of 3 times 7. So if you want to rewrite it, you would say the square root of 49 times the square root of 3. This is 7, so you get 7 square root of 3. Okay? So, so um, 
if you, if you multiply it out, which is what some of you can do, so I'll do that way, 147, and so then you get 24 times, and then this right here is this, so you get times 7, okay, square root of 3, and then 24 times 7, 24 times 7, so 24 times 7 gives us 168. So this is 168 square root of 3, all right? And then number 10, I'm going to do number 10 right here, so number 10. So number 10, you have the square root of 6, x to the 9th, times the square root of 3, x to the 5th, y to the 7th, okay? So let's just go ahead and multiply this out. 6 times 3 is 18. That's easy to deal with. So I get the square root of 18. x to the 9th times x to the 5th. So 9 plus 5 is 14. So that's x to the 14th. And then I have y to the 7th. All right, so now I'm going to rewrite this as, as a product of three square roots. So according to the product property for radicals, I can rewrite this as square root of 18 times the square root of x to the 14th times the square root of y to the 7th. And then the largest perfect square that goes into 18 is 9. So I'm going to rewrite this as square root of 9 times square root of 2. 9 times 2 is 18. Uh, nine, uh, the square root of x to the 19th. No, that's 14. I'm sorry. 14. All right. So x to the 14th, the square root of x to the 14th, that's 14. I can simplify easily. 14 is divisible by 2. So that will be x to the 7th, right? And then let's talk about y to the 7th. Now, I can simplify the square root of y to the 7th because 7 is greater than or equal to the index. So it can be simplified. Now you got to simplify though. 7 is not divisible by 2 like 14 was divisible by 2. So I got this nice factor right here. But think about the largest whole number that's divisible by 7 that 2 goes into evenly. And it will be 6. I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of y to the 6 times the square root of y. And so now let's simplify what we have. So I get 3. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 2. x to the 7th. The square root of y to the 6 is y to the 3rd and then square root of y. And so therefore your answer, your answer, you get 3x to the 7th, y to the 3rd. So 3x to the 7th, y to the 3rd. And then the square root of 2 times the square root of y, you can write as one square root now, and that's the square root of 2y. And that's the answer. Okay? So that is the, uh, the key to, let me go ahead and use this one. So that is the key to, uh, Topic 22, Radicals uh, Extra 12.